Faithfulness. You know, I've lost track of the number of times that I've asked a bride and groom to pledge their fidelity to one another. Faithfulness, though, is at the core of traditional marriage vows. But faithfulness is more than an expectation for a married couple. It's designed to be a defining characteristic of you as a follower of Jesus. To be faithful is to be consistently and perpetually loyal. Faithfulness was rewarded in the parables of Jesus. When a person fulfilled the expectations of their master, they were rewarded with the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. In contrast, Paul talks about some who had experienced shipwreck with regard to their faith. Rather than remaining loyal to the Lord, their commitment waned. They crashed. They jumped ship. So in the next couple of minutes, I want to explore some of the reefs that are out there. These are the things that you and I have to recognize and steer clear of so that we don't experience shipwreck in regard to our faith. You can read further about these things in passages like Matthew 13, where Jesus gives the parable of the soils. The first is adversity. When we experience trouble or adversity in life, we can be tempted to jettison our faith. Sometimes that adversity can lead to comparison. Like Asaph in Psalm 73, you may even begin to compare your difficulties with what you perceive to be the, the easy life of those making no pretenses of being people of faith. But don't draw wrong conclusions. The ease or the difficulty of your life is not the measure of God's love for you. In fact, you have every reason to expect that you, as one of God's children, will experience His loving discipline along the way. The second coral reef that can wreck our faithfulness is opposition or persecution. Peter's a good example here. In spite of his best intentions to go to the grave with Jesus, he ended up denying him when he was pressed. When we experience animosity and opposition for our faith, we can be tempted to just kind of fold rather than remain faithful. But remember, that wasn't the final word on Peter. Once the Spirit of God lived inside of him, he withstood some of the most imaginable opposition and threats and suffering that one could expect. Anxiety represents another coral reef that can shipwreck your faithfulness. Worry tends to move our focus to worst case scenarios and it tends to remove the power and the presence and the comfort of our Heavenly Father from the equation. As a result, we can end up forfeiting our confidence that God's amazing grace can strengthen us, even in our greatest weakness. But if we make anxiety fuel for our prayers, we experience His peace and His faithfulness. So we have to be on our guard lest we run aground on the reef of adversity, or opposition, or anxiety. But the parable of the soils points to yet another dangerous reality. Idolatry can create gaping holes in the hull of your ship. Jesus described it as the deceitfulness of wealth. When money or any other thing becomes the driving force of our lives, we lose sight of the only one deserving of that position. All of the other things we pursue are deceitful. They give an impression of being satisfying, but in reality, they're not. They never deliver enough. Jesus alone is the bread that satisfies, the living water that quenches our thirst. So rather than crashing on the reefs of adversity, opposition, anxiety, or idolatry, you can remain true. Stay loyal to the Lord and you'll be satisfied in Him.